So today we are in Colorado Springs. It's a beautiful morning outside. The main thing that we want to do today is get to the top of Pikes Peak, which is the highest that we've ever been in our lives. But we know that the weather is very changeable here. So at the moment it's nice and sunny, but we'll just see what happens because you can get the four seasons in one day. We'll also have a look around at the Garden of the Gods. We've got a little bit of stuff we want to post home as well. So we'll just see what else we can fit in today in Colorado Springs. There are a number of ways to reach the summit of Pikes Peak. Most people will take the long winding drive up the steep two lane road, which requires a park entry and timed entry permit. Others will be brave and hike or cycle. But for those of us who want a little different adventure, we are taking the Manitou Pikes Peak Cog Railway. The railway begins at Manitou Springs, where a parking lot is available for those with tickets for the train. The Manitou and Pikes Peak Cog Railway is one of the most iconic train journeys in the United States. Since 1891, this historic landmark has been chugging up the steep grades of Pikes Peak, reaching an elevation of 14,110 feet, the highest train in the country. All right, you're all good. Thank you. Uh, the 10 o'clock train is going to be leaving in about 10 minutes. You still have time to use the restroom. They're located down at the end of the platform. We are going to be going by rushing rivers and waterfalls, so might be a good idea to use the restroom now while you got the chance. <laughs> The summit of Pikes Peak is around exactly half the elevation of Mount Everest, so it is pretty high. And it is up there with some of the highest in Colorado. However, there are still 38 higher mountains in the United States, with Alaska's Mount Denali topping the list at 20,310 feet. As we climb, we pass through diverse landscapes from lush forests to rugged, rocky terrain. The unique cog system allows the train to tackle grades up to 25%, making it an engineering marvel. But it's not just about the numbers, it's about the experience. The cog railway has played a vital role in the region's history, serving miners, tourists and locals alike. Today, the railway continues to innovate with environmental initiatives like biodiesel fuel and waste reduction. From the summit, we take in the breathtaking panoramic views of the surrounding mountains, the Great Plains, and even the curvature of the earth. The scenery is always stunning, whether you visit in summer, winter, spring, or fall. Right, so we made it on the Cog Railway all the way to the top of Pikes Peak. We're at 40,115 feet above sea level, which is, I'm not sure what it is in metres, we'll put it on the screen below. It's twice the height of Mount Kosciuszko, which is Australia's highest peak. And we're feeling fine. Not feeling any sickness, no headaches, not really breathless, only a little bit, but yeah, feeling fine. Good. We're up the top and it started snowing, so that's pretty cool. Oh well, yeah, you can see it, look. Yeah, Woo-wee! So, that's pretty much two seasons so far in the one day. Really cold when it does get windy. Like you can see that ice sort of stuff now going horizontal. That's a really cold wind. We got here, it was sunny. We could see clearly and it wasn't even five minutes and it just came over this cloud and it's snowing these pellets on us. How amazing is that? So I've heard about these donuts that 
you buy here that they're made at such a high elevation that they don't survive when you go down out of this elevation. So we're in the queue. Uh, see how we go, see if we can get one. We've only got uh, 20 minutes until the train leaves, so hopefully the queue moves fast. So they keep things... They keep... Just come here. Yes, listen up. We're closing the road. We're going to hit the fire. So please head your car and head down. If you drove up here, please head down. Okay, we're going to head down. Okay, we're going to head down. Okay, we're going to head down. Alright, so they keep the line moving, it's self-serve and then just pay the cashier. It is card only. We got two plain cinnamon donuts for $4.15, I think it was. They're really sort of crispy on the outside. Mm. Mm. Nice cinnamon donut, really sweet. They're not warm though. Okay, so we think we have 15 minutes to spare. The guy just came around saying that if you've driven your car up here, you have to leave now because they're closing the road with inclement weather. Um, as you saw before, it started snowing. That snowing is coming down hard out there now. You cannot see the view. It's cloudy. So we're glad that we saw the view when we first got here. The weather changes really, really fast up here. Mmm, that is so airy. Mmm, yum. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Mm. So inside here, the rails are heated. So that's really nice. Mm. Okay, we're making our way back to the hog train. As you can see, it's blowing a gale. There's snow. It's actually hard pellets. It's not soft. It's not soft, flaky snow. It's smacking me in the face. It hurts. It's cold. But I'm so glad we came here and experienced this and the massive change of weather that happened so quickly. It's getting harder. It's just gone lunchtime, it's about one o'clock. So we just got back from Pikes Peak on the Cog Rail, which is fantastic. Good fun, we, we met some great people in the, the seats that we were with. We met uh, Granger, Mac, Ben and Mark. We had a good time with them chatting about all things Australia, all things America, just good fun. We got to the top, as you could see, we got four seasons in one day. <laughs> Uh, the weather was really hectic there for a while. They actually told people to get in their cars and start driving back down and got that bad. So just expect any sort of weather when you're here. It can happen. So we did not feel any altitude sickness at all. Maybe because we'd acclimatized a little bit. We'd been around the area and that height, well, this sort of 8,000 feet height for a while. But we didn't feel ill. We just kept sipping our water and we're fine. All good. So we've got a few things, we've got so many souvenirs actually, <laughs> so many souvenirs. We're going to go to the post office, get a box and post some of the souvenirs home. Uh, we're going to try and put some of our winter weather gear in there as well because where we're going now, it's warm all the way through. So we're going to get rid of souvenirs, which we bought too many, uh, and some warm clothes, which we don't need anymore. Then we'll go to Garden of the Gods, have a look around there. And I believe I can fly the drone around there too, so. So, as Scott said, we've bought a ton of souvenirs. We've got heaps of stuff. It's going to make our luggage overweight for the airplane, if it even fits in the suitcases to start with. We've also got to switch out our winter gear for summer gear because where we're going next is not going to have as much snow or any snow at all compared to where we've been. We'll still be at a higher elevation, but it's a different part of America. It's a lot warmer. It's going to be in the 
30s plus Celsius or 80s, 90s, 100s Fahrenheit. So it's a complete change of climate, change of outfits, and we need to send our winter gear home. So we've got a lot to put in some boxes. What we got confused with is between USPS and UPS. So in Australia, we just have Australia Post, which is our national postal service. And Australia Post has a branch called Star Track. Now Star Track um, does express postage for parcels and things like that, as well as, and Australia Post does also express parcels and express postage and normal mail. So I'm not sure if that compares at all with USPS or UPS, but we got the two mixed up and we went to UPS store and the lady, I'm not kidding you, quoted us around 925, 925 US dollars. We nearly, we dropped our, our jaw. We were, there's no way we're doing that. That's nearly 1,400 Australian dollars just to send stuff home. So that's a no go. So we've, we've gone to Walmart, picked up some bubble wrap and we were going to get some boxes there, but we know that there is a flat rate at the UPS? USPS. At the USPS. So we, we can't send our stuff home today. What we've decided to do is come back to the Airbnb, have a kip, wrap everything up in bubble wrap, and we're going to go out to the Garden of Gods, have a look at that, and then post our stuff from the next town that we go to. After a midday nap, we wake up to find these deer in the front garden of our Airbnb. We had never been so close to deer before. So cool. And then when we arrived at the Garden of Gods, we saw a herd of wild bighorn sheep grazing on the roadside. This certainly drew a crowd. Garden of the Gods is a breathtaking park in Colorado Springs. This geological wonder features unique red rock formations, towering sandstone peaks and breathtaking vistas. The rock's distinctive red hue is due to the presence of iron oxide, which has been oxidised over millions of years. The rocks are a type of sandstone formed from ancient sand dunes that were compressed and cemented over time. The unique shapes and formations result from millions of years of erosion, weathering and tectonic activity. All right, so we come down to the Garden of the Gods. Uh, it's pretty busy here. The car park's pretty full. It's late afternoon, so there's lots of people looking out for the sunset. So we're going to have a bit of a walk through and just see what we can see. There is a bit of cloud around, so we're not sure about the colours, but pretty cool looking place. Some of the park's most iconic attractions are the Balanced Rock, a massive boulder perched precariously on a pedestal, and the Three Graces, a trio of towering rock formations offering breathtaking views of the surrounding landscape. But the Garden of Gods is more than just a geological wonder. It's also a place of spiritual significance. The park has been home to numerous cultures throughout history, including the Ute Nation, which considers this land sacred. All right, so it was a great day in Colorado Springs. We went to the heights of Pikes Peak, and then we saw a little deer in the front yard of the Airbnb we're staying at, and then we finished at the Garden of Gods with the beautiful colors there and the, the afternoon sun. We've stopped and picked up a beer or two, pizza for dinner. Uh, do pizzas very differently over here. Even though we went to a Domino's pizza in America, it's very different to Domino's in Australia. Domino's in Australia, you've got all those set sort of menu things that's not like that over here you've got a few set menus but then the option to make your own up so a little bit different over here but really good pizza so that's the end of this episode remember take care of your mates